Hello everybody, Betsy Watzel for WinterWarriorsLive.com. I am joined by head coach Jamie Kieser of the Winter Lady Warriors, the State A bound Winter Lady Warriors. Jamie, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Just got done with your last practice before uh, heading over to Sioux Falls tomorrow morning. Uh, you'll have one practice over there, I understand, and then uh, get ready for Thursday's big matchup. And, uh, Lady Warriors finished 24 and 3 overall. <laughs> Uh, got a first round bye for the Regents, and then you took on a Red Cloud team that you manhandled pretty well. Um, anything you want to report from that, just how the girls played? And um, they came out, we came out ready to play. I was a little nervous um, having that first round bye. We haven't had that um, since the Sweet 16's come around, so um, I was a little worried taking about a week and a half to two weeks off and how we'd come, but um, with those losses after the SCSD, we had quite a few things that we needed to really kind of work on, so... Um, in all, it, it turned out really well. Um, I was glad to have those practices, so um, that was good. Um, they came out, um, I think, hungry to play a match because it had been a week and a half since we'd played um, one. So um, it was at home, and uh, they came out ready to play um, and just kind of took care of business. I was kind of looking ahead. I think you kind of were looking ahead. We were kind of expecting maybe to play a team from over east, um, but then that's why you play the, the matches. Um, things kind of got messed up with Wagner losing, Dakota Valley winning. We ended up uh, finding out we were going to play our own region opponent in the uh, Pine Ridge Lady Thorpes and did that last Tuesday um, over in Wall and really took care of business there and just re uh, recap that a little bit. Well. They came out ready to play. Um, like I said, it was kind of crazy, um, I don't know, coincidental, I don't know exactly what you call it, that we lost in Wall and the Sweet 16 the year before, and then we turn around and have to play in the Sweet 16 again in Wall. So at first, um, the girls weren't really excited about that, but the more we kind of talked about it, the more we realized that um, the past is in the past. We create our future, and so they were bound and determined that they were not going to lose again in uh, Wall for the Sweet 16, that they were going to make it to state. So they came out ready to play. Um, we, they did a really, really good job with the scouting report on Pine Ridge. Um, everything I pretty much told them, they... Uh, to a, to a T, we really took care of that uh, Thompson, the number six. We knew um, from watching her at Regions um, in winter um, when they played Bennett County that you know she was their one of their main hitters, and that we were going to have to stop her. And they did a really good job of shutting her down. Um, and then Big Crow in the middle, um, they did a really good job on her when she came around in the middle. So um, they they were ready to go. Um, they were um, bound and determined that it was not going to happen two years in a row, and we were going to make it to state this year. First draw right out of the gate Thursday afternoon about 1:45. You have the Elk Point Jefferson Lady Huskies. Kind of, I don't know, again coincidental. Calla Bertram transfers back or to winner, and you'll be taking on her former teammates. Uh, first round of the state tournament. Uh, just tell a little bit about what you know about Elk Point Jefferson. Um, really, they're very similar to us, um, I guess you could say. Um, they have some pretty decent hitters, um, middle, outside, right side, um, kind of like us, you know, um, doesn't matter who's in the front and the back, you know, we're kind of hard to stop. Um, and uh, they play pretty good defense. Um, so um, it's going to come down to who like, makes less mistakes. I think who stays in the system more. Um, I think serve receive is going to be a key. Um, and we have to stop number 16, Carly Corder. Um, she is their, I think, main hitter that we really need to um, make sure we get some touches on her that she doesn't uh, keep swinging away. Um, and then um, I, don't, I think pretty much if we can get them out of system, hit into their outsides, I think their outsides are a little bit weaker. Um, I think their middles are who they would like to go to. And then when um, number 11, this Donnelly gets in front, um, they like to go to her on the right side too more actually than they like to go to their outside. So that's one of the little things that's different. Um, we kind of set our outsides quite a bit. Um, so uh, they're good blockers. We need to make sure we cover all the time, expect the ball to be blocked. Uh, we need to be ready. Um, and it's going to come down to defense too, um, who can uh, be more scrappy, get a few of those balls up that are hard hit. So if you can get them kind of out of system, uh, they kind of start to... Um, get frustrated, kind of get in each other's heads, um, so um, I think that's going to be another key that um, if we can kind of just uh, serve at them aggressively and serve and hit at them, um, you know, I think I think whoever's going to come out with that, but like I said, if we can kind of just get in their heads, um, I know it's from film that they, they kind of go down from there, so those are some little things um, that we need to do, but biggest thing, we need to be the um, Aggressive ones, we need to attack the ball and we need to serve the ball um, at them and make them out of system. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. And one thing I think this Winter Lady Warrior team, um, if they get down, 
anytime they've gotten down in a match, maybe in the SESD was about the first time. I think we talked about that a little bit. They really didn't play their type of volleyball, got down on themselves, but I think this is the type of team that if they get down to an Elk Point Jefferson team early, I think they can fight them, fight their way back. Mm -hmm. The winner will play the winner of either Miller or Rapid City Christian, and of course, then the losers will play each other. Uh, have you talked a little bit about possibly seeing the Miller Lady Wrestlers again, or have you just kind of been concentrating on EPJ and then we just going from there? Pretty much just concentrate on EPJ for the most part. Um, we really haven't even looked at past that. Um, we we talked about you know not being satisfied. Um, with just making it state tournament. Uh, that was our goal from the very beginning, from pretty much we lost last year. But now that we're here, we just can't be satisfied. Um, we're too good of a team to just act like, okay, that's it, season's over, we made it. Um, and I think they're hungry, they're ready. They don't, they don't want to um, be just satisfied either. They don't want to go in there um, and go in for seventh and eighth. Um, and we kind of talked about things like that. But really, we haven't looked past EPJ. Um, they know that if they do, they'll most likely get another shot at Miller, but um, we said one match at a time, one set at a time, one point at a time. Uh, we need to get past EPJ before we can even uh, look on to the future. Uh, we kind of talked about, you know, how this 2000, this team is really comparable to the 2013 team um, and uh, just, you know, celebrate every point, you know, get excited, excited for your teammates, you know, it's a team effort um, and they've been doing a lot better at that. You know, we did very good at the beginning at that. The SESD, we kind of, that was kind of went away, um, and now they got it back. And this team is very unselfish. They don't care who gets the stats. They don't care who gets the kills, the assists, the digs. They don't care. They just they just want to win. So um, that's one thing that with this team and, and any team, it's really hard to coach the gel, the gelling, the getting along on, off the court, and uh, this team does that very well. I know earlier in the season uh, we talked about power points beginning of the season. Now what what they're calling the Sodak 16. Did you kind of fall where you wanted to be? It ended up going in as the four seed with Wagner falling earlier in the regions. Um, and then, of course, advancing the state tournament as a four seed. Is that kind of where you guys wanted to be? Um, from our beginning, our goal was to be in the top five. So we did hit our goal. Um, if we wouldn't have had those losses to Wagner and to Burke or even one or the other one, I think we would have been um, probably three, I would guess. Um, you know, we were two, so if we would have lost, or won both of them, then we would have stayed two, um, which of course, you know, you'd rather be two than four. But um, that's kind of the way it is. Um, we did hit our goal um, the last couple of years. Well, this is the third year of the Sweet 16, so that's 16 now. But um, first year we came in as what, I think the 16 seed? Yep. 15, 16 seed, yep. and then last year we came in as about the 14th, 15th seed, I can't remember. But anyways, you're, you're playing those top teams, and, and it's hard to get by those top teams when you're sitting, you know, lower like that. You're going to play your tougher competition. Um, so that, you know, we had talked about, you know, since pretty much this summer we've been going to team camps, and then all year long, or all regular season long, we talked about, you know, how important it is. Those, those points really do matter. Um, you know, and it makes, with the Sweet 16, so at 16, it makes your regular season really matter. Um, and you do all your work um, up into, you know, the regular season, you do all your work um, to get to play those um, not as tough as teams. Um, so, you know, that's really, you know, you can say, yeah, we did a, you know, we didn't really have a tough way to, to get to state, but we... We earned it by our regular season play and playing, you know, beating Miller, beating Wagner, beating Burke. Um, those are what really paid off to get us to that uh, four seed. So, um, you know, yeah, I'm glad, you know, I think I'll take the four seed um, and, and be happy with that. Um, but like I said, those, those power points really do matter now that you have your SODAC 16. A lot of people, I think, are looking at Sioux Falls Christian, you know, probably being the team to beat. but. I, it's a wide open field. Looking at the teams that are involved uh, this year, obviously Miller's been rated number one all season, uh, or pretty much all the season. Um, do you do you know a lot about the other teams besides Miller, um, and what what you expect to see? Um, yeah, yeah, like you said, I, it's pretty much wide open. Um, it, it's anybody who's going to show up, who's going to put together three solid matches, is probably who's going to get it accomplished. Um, yeah, I would probably say Sioux Falls Christian. Um, it's probably maybe your little bit more favored one. Um, you know, then you got Miller, who has Fernholz, you know, is probably the best best hitter for sure in Class A. 
Um, I just think maybe Sioux Falls has a little bit more to go with their team um, than than just one hitter. Not saying Miller has just one, but they have one for sure dominant hitter. Um, you know, Van Egdom from Sioux Falls Christian, she's a really good hitter. Uh, they have a couple other ones on that team. So, um, But like I said, it's going to be whoever shows up. Um, this year you really don't have your solid. Like in the past, you had your Dakota Valley, your Dakota Valley, your Dakota Valley for now the last couple years that had those hitters that you knew was just a powerhouse and you were really you know, going to have to put a really solid sets together in order to beat them. Um, now I think that, you know, anybody can make the mistakes here um, and uh, anybody can come out, you know, um, in the whole state tournament. So it's going to be who shows up, who can put three matches back to back to back um, together and, uh, and and earn it and not give up so many unearned points. But it, it's really anybody's you know, team yeah, that we, we know pretty well, Miller and us, will end up, you know, are in the same bracket, could possibly see each other. And then um, just, uh, of course, in Class B, Burke down the road. Kind of nice to have two teams from off Highway 18, South Central, South Dakota, representing their two classes at the state tournament. And any last words you want to say, Jamie, as far as getting ready for state? Um, no. Nope. No. Nope. Come on, ready to go. Us. Watch us on PBS if you can't. But um, yeah, we'll uh, try to put together three solid matches, and hopefully we can get it accomplished. Okay, but Jamie, I thank you. Uh, Winter Lady Warriors going as the number four seed in the state tournament, uh, taking on the Elk Point Jefferson Lady Huskies. Uh, winner sitting at uh, 26 and three is is your record, uh, including regions. And uh, uh, Elk Point Jeffers will come in at 27 and five. So we wish you the best of luck, Jamie. We'll see you over there Thursday, and uh, hopefully uh, maybe next week be talking about a state championship. You never know. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie.